Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Welcome to our webinar and thank you for spending your time with us today. I'm Sun Q, I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. Today's case study webinar, Dynamic Analysis of Prague Footbridge, is presented by John Blazek. He has been working in the civil engineering field for over 15 years with extensive experience in bridge design and execution. He also participated in various projects in many European countries like Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Poland. He's now the chief engineer and CEO for VCon. In today's presentation, he will provide a basic understanding of the concept of dynamic analysis and the design process of the bridge, as well as his use of MetaCivil for the project. As a matter of fact, this Metas Expert webinar is being conducted in conjunction with the Metas Experience Program 360, currently being held throughout the month of May. Metas Experience Program 360 is an event specially designed for bridge engineers, including hands-on trainings on Metas Civil software, special webinars, and a 40-day free trial license. There are many people who have already registered for the program, but the registration for the Midas Experience Program 360 has not yet been completed. So if you're interested, please apply through invitation letters sent. And during the webinar, if you have any questions about the content, just type it in the question box in the control panel. We'll collect them and have them answered after the session. You'll be able to get the answers via email. And if by any chance you missed some part of the webinar, please do not worry. We'll send out the link of the recorded version to your email and the PowerPoint materials as well. All right, thank you guys. This is it for the introduction. And now we're gonna get started. Enjoy the webinar. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, we warmly welcome you on today's session, one of the Midas Expert webinar session. And today's topic uh, will be the dynamic analysis of one interesting food bridge from Prague, which is the capital city of Czech Republic. The food bridge uh, has been built uh, last year. My name is Jan Blažek and I am a CEO and chief engineer of company Vcon. And I made this presentation in collaboration with Mr. Harzin. Uh, from company Valbeck, who helped me with uh, preparation of this session, and he was the principal structural engineer on this project. I would also like to introduce our colleague, uh, Professor Rablik, also from company Valbeck, who was the main author of the footbridge design and the uh, main engineer. We did uh, the assembly design and shop drawings on this uh, project. This webinar is divided into three parts. In the first part, I will present you our company, uh, then some information about this project. In the second part, uh, I will tell you more about the bridge design, about its geometry, materials used, how it was assembled. And in the third part, third part uh, I will show you how we did the dynamic analysis in Midas Civil, uh, show you the step-by-step -step procedure how to prepare the dynamic analysis and practical information about options you have when performing this type of analysis. And at the end, uh, we will show you how we designed the tuned mass dampers for this bridge. Our company, Vicon, is a member of Valbeck Group, which is almost for 30 years growing engineering office company, uh, now with over 400 employees. Uh, we have engineers in Central and Eastern Europe region. Vicon is a branch focused mainly on designing steel and concrete bridges, bridge building technologies, and detailed designing of steel structures. We have bureaus in Czech cities, Prague, Liberec, and Ostrava. Now I will show you some examples of our work we did in last years. 
Um, this is a university campus uh, in Prague where we designed uh, two extraordinary food bridges connecting two old buildings. This is a steel slender food bridge uh, we designed uh, to connect Czech and Slovak Republic uh, across the river Moreva, where we did uh, the assembly and detailed design with uh, shop drawings also. Uh, this project was finished in year 2019. We are also designing uh, bridge building technologies uh, for assembly or for construction of larger bridges. We are able to design incrementing loading method, uh, the balance cantilever method and uh, other, other types of constructing of uh, higher or larger bridges. This is an example of uh, 750 meters long uh, highway concrete bridge from Slovakia we did in 2017. And now back to our presented project. Uh, the new Troja food bridge is located in Prague, which is the capital of Czech Republic. And uh, the food bridge replaced uh, old uh, collapsed bridge which was located in the same position before. Um, the old footbridge collapsed in 2017 and because uh, the footbridge is located in a really important place in Prague, uh, there was a pressure to quickly create uh, and design a new footbridge or in the old position. The main scope of the project was to create quickly a new design and assembly according to necessity to quickly replace previously collapsed footbridge. Uh, the footbridge has to be in elevated position and with slender shape because uh, the design was uh, really involved with uh, anti-flood regulations uh, because uh, in, the, in the position of the footbridge the floods uh, occur very often. Also, the position of the bridge is important because it is co connecting the popular Prague Zoo and one of the biggest Prague parks. Uh, with, and the assignment was to create an interesting structure uh, because of the importance of, of, the, of the spot. The builder of the project was the city of Prague. The total cost of the project were 6 million euros. We have to start quickly making the design works uh, since uh, 2017 to 2019 with all the permissions uh, being uh, handled. And the assembly and the construction of the new footbridge began in November 2019. The footbridge was opened to um, to service uh, in October two, 2020. The main designer of the footbridge was company Valbeck. We made the detailed design and analysis, and we in the weekend we made the steel structures drawings, uh, shop drawings, and assembly design of the project. Here you can see the exact position of the bridge in Prague. Uh, it is in the north, northern part. With number two is marked the Prague Zoo. The number three is the Stromovka Park, one of the biggest parks in Prague. Uh, number four is the Prague Castle. And now to the bridge design. The total length of the bridge is over 250 meters. It is composed of steel subtle structure, load bearing structure uh, with a wooden deck which is made of tropical wood SOB. Uh, structurally the bridge acts as a continuous beam with six spans with a span length between 24.5 and 55 meters. 
The main beam is supported with a composite steel and concrete slender piers, uh, which are connected by pins to, to the main structure. Uh, the main beam is composed of steel tube with diameter over 900 millimeters and with tapered I-profile cross beams added to it and U-profile longitudinal beams from stainless steel. The height of the bridge deck is over 12 meters over river level, which was um, due to reef anti-flood regulations in, in the place. These are overall drawings. Uh, from the top view, you can see the bridge is straight. Uh, in the longitudinal direction, it creates a vertical arc. Uh, the main span of length uh, 55 meters uh, is crossing the Vltava River, and with the orange uh, dashed lines, you can see the flat levels we have to cross. The pier height were adjusted according to create the optimum stiffness of the supports um, of the bridge. In the cross section, you can see that the main beam is uh, composed of the main tubular profile and the cross beams, tapered eye profiles and the longitudinal U profiles from stainless steel. Also, these outside longitudinal stainless tubes are in the uh, part of the cross section. The railing has ability to be bended over, over the deck and not to create um, a barrier during the flood. The bridge uh, has been built by company SMP, which is a member of Wansi Group, and the steel structure manufacturer and assembler was uh, the company MCE, which is a member of uh, Habau Group. The steel structure was divided into five parts, which were separately manufactured and delivered to the site where they were uh, positioned uh, on the piers and then welded together on-site. Here you can see the on-site assembly uh, with um, on-site weld preparation, preposition of the on-site weld. The main span across the river with some additional 10 meters on, on each side was assembled on the river bank and then it was uh, positioned uh, parallel to the to the footbridge uh, axis with help uh, of pontoon which uh, helped to move the structure across the river after positioning parallel to the footbridge axis uh, the structure was lifted by a pair of cranes into the final position and pinned in, in, to the piers. The bridge uh, has been finished and opened to service uh, in October last year and since then it's service to, to the citizens and tourists in Prague. Due to the really slender design uh, we have to install and design two tuned mass dampers which are located uh, in the structure of the bridge and uh, about their design I will talk more later and uh, in the operation there are no problems with, with induced vibration even though uh, the bridge is really heavily used by, by citizens. So now let's step up to the main topic of this session, which is the dynamic analysis. Uh, usually when we perform analysis in FEM softwares, we make the structural model, we are using elements and inputting loads and define boundaries and then perform analysis and uh, evaluate the inner forces. Uh, in the dynamic analysis, uh, 
we have to also look on other issues like uh, how to define or convert the loads or the mass of, of the bridge with soap weight to, to masses. We have to go through the eigenvalue analysis and uh, look uh, on the limits or define the limits uh, of comfort and loads created by pedestrians and um, also have a closer look uh, on the damping of the structure we are analyzing. When the structure is vulnerable to, to be induced uh, harmonically, we have to perform also the time history analysis and harmonic analysis. And in the case where the uh, When the acceleration of the structure exceeds some defined limits, we have to also be prepared to design the tuned mast or other type of dampers. When modeling such a slender structure, we have to be really careful because in the recent years, some footbridges were excited laterally by dense pedestrian streams in which pedestrians interacted with the bridge vibration. A uh, self-excited large response was produced and caused discomfort for pedestrians. Footbridges should be designed in such a way that this pedestrian bridge interaction phenomenon, also called lock-in, does not arise. Uh, we created in MIDA Civil Software a 3D beam model of all structure, including the foundations modeled by supported piles or with uh, boundaries created by elastic support. We also have to define the construction stages to model correctly the development of inner forces. And uh, all the other dead loads need to be redistributed uh, along uh, the model to represent their, their mass to, to, the, uh, to the structural behavior. All permanent loads must be transferred to masses. Self-weight is automatically converted into x, y, z directions using uh, lumped mass metrics for redistribution to nodes only. All additional loads uh, have to be transferred uh, to, to masses with, uh, with a special tool. Uh, we have two options when, when choosing the type of redistribution, uh, which the first one is the lumped mass method which gave us uh, less accurate results, uh, redistributes the masses into nodes, and it is good for modeling of, of bigger structures. When using the consistent mass uh, distribution, uh, it creates a more complicated model for uh, FEM analysis, but it's more accurate, and the loads are redistributed along the whole length of the beam. When considering the additional self weight of, of, other, of other structures, the loads are transferred into the position with uh, their centroid of gravity switched off. For the eigenvalue analysis, uh, we use the eigenvectors with Lanzosch method, which means the trigonal matrix is used to perform the eigenvalue analysis. And this method is effectively used when performing eigenvalue analysis for lower modes, which is the case for uh, the full bridges. For analysis of the eigenvalues as periods, frequencies, and angular frequencies and their shapes, uh, we choose the Lanzosch analysis. The determinant of the matrix is finding out the non-trivial solution of the algebraic equations, which are homogeneous. And according to the amount of degrees of freedom, it can be expressed 
by the number uh, of eigenvalues. The 100 mode shapes uh, are sufficient for analysis of the type of foot bridge and they should cover all the significant modes. With the redistributed masses and the, the choose, chosen option of so, solution and the number of, of shapes we want to solve, we perform the given analysis. Uh, we are searching for the natural, natural period, uh, which is the time that it takes to freely vibrate the structure into the corresponding natural mode in one full cycle. And then we are also studying the modal particip participation factor, which is the ratio of influence uh, of a specific mode to the total modes. Here you can see the first four uh, eigenvalue shapes, uh, which are the three of them are longitudinal vibration shapes, and uh, this, the number two is lateral. After we finish with the agonal analysis, we manually sort the lateral, vertical, and rotational mode, which are compared with the limit values later. Uh, it is really important that uh, you, will, you try to have uh, more models uh, representing the stiffness uh, of, of, the, of the structure when for example you have composite concrete and steel structure you you have to also take uh, the effect of the connection between these two materials uh, into account and uh, you have to find the lowest stiffness that uh, that is representing uh, the structural behavior we are looking for natural mode which is a, a, a free vibration of an undamped system. The modes are representing the order in which the least energy is required to deform the structure. Then we look for the natural period and uh, modal partic participation factor. Uh, this is the first analysis we have to do with uh, studying the dynamic behavior of the footbridge. And important is that the minimum of 90% of the mass have to oscillate. Otherwise, you have to increase the number of the frequencies you are looking for. After having the appropriate model and results, uh, we are trying to find um, a limit for, for evaluating the behavior of, of our structure. When looking to your codes, we don't have really much help. Uh, we have the verification of the comfort criteria, which is defined by the nature of frequencies for vertical vibrations and horizontal and torsional vibrations. We have also some uh, comfort criteria, which are defined by the acceleration of of the food which we, we received. Uh, and then in Eurocode for bridges, uh, there is uh, an article that the eigenvalue analysis should be done you know, on an appropriate structure model. Pedestrians are, should induce the periodic force with frequencies between 1 to 3 hertz in vertical direction and 0.5 to 1.5 hertz in horizontal direction. Uh, the rest is on the designer's choice and his experience to define the appropriate, appropriate dynamic models of pedestrians load and the comfort criteria uh, you should be fulfilling. So when we didn't have uh, any really helping uh, procedures defined by Eurocodes, uh, we used the manual which is called Design of Lightweight Foot Bridges for Human Induced Vibration. Uh, this, this handbook uh, written by several authors led by Mr. Heinmeier 
they really clearly defined the expected traffic classes loading and densities and also the comfort classes you should uh, you should meet when designing uh, a slender footbridge according to the significant um, locations uh, and the amount of people going through uh, the footbridge is uh, you choose the uh, traffic density and this bridge is uh, in a class uh, of traffic density number four with uh, the intensity one pedestrian per square meter the bridge was also tested for different classes with more strict regulations uh, to to meet the uh, acceleration limit for comfort in the handbook and defined by the previous researchers there are really uh, precisely defined the dynamic forces you should uh, be considering when uh, modeling the loads used by humans the three dimensional dynamic forces are induced by one pedestrian and are they are generated by the movement of the body mass and the put down rolling and the push off of the feet the forces are called human ground reaction forces when they are induced by walking then they form an almost periodic excitation people walk with similar step frequencies due to the similar physiological human constitution but the step frequencies are influenced by the purpose of the movement and the traffic intensity step frequencies between 1.25 to 2.3 hertz show the highest probability of occurrence as during walking one foot is always in contact with the ground the loading does not appear completely at any time like in the case of running the human ground reaction forces of both feet overlap and form a periodic loading that is moving in time and space. The magnitudes of the vertical and longitudinal forces mainly depend on the person's step frequency and body weight. Their periodicity is related to the step frequency. The lateral component is caused by the movement of the center of gravity from one foot to another. The oscillating motion of the center of gravity introduces a dynamic force with half the walking frequency. Walking induces a vertical force with a butterfly shape having two dominant force maximums. The first one is caused by the impact of the heel on the ground, while the second one is produced by the push-off. The maximum rise uh, with uh, increasing the step frequency and the horizontal force components in longitudinal and lateral direction are much smaller than the vertical component the longitudinal force characterizes the retarding and the pushing walking period the lateral force is caused by the lateral oscillation mm -hmm. of the body it shows a large scatter as it is influenced by, for example, type of shoes, and a toe out of the angle, and the posture of the upper part of the body. And so this precise definition of, of uh, human-induced loading has to be transferred to actual loading models. Uh, the periodic force is not stationary, it moves with a constant speed along the bridge and uh, we create uh, a periodic force that is represented uh, by this fewer uh, equations the periodic force is not stationary it moves with a constant speed along the bridge so according to the handbook design of lightweight food bridges uh, we are using the load models for pedestrian groups uh, called the TC traffic classes, which takes into account uh, free movement of the pedestrians. Consequently, the synchronization among the group members is equal to a low density stream.
In the case of the more dense streams, TC4 and TC5, in our case it's TC4, the walking gets obstructed with the, in the forward uh, direction and the movement of the stream gets slower and the synchronization increases. Beyond the upper limit value of 1.5 uh, pedestrians per square meter, walking of pedestrians is impossible, so the dynamic effects significantly is being reduced. When a stream becomes dense, the correlation between pedestrians increases, but the dynamic load tends to decrease. The harmonic load models above describes the loads induced by streams of pedestrians when walking along the footbridge. In the method we use, the pedestrian is uh, induced action is represented by an oscillating distributed load called named PT, and this load is applied in accordance with the mode shape as shown later on the figure. The PC factor is a reduction factor that takes into account the probability that the footfall frequency approaches the natural frequency under consideration. This factor will be discussed uh, on the next slide. The load value depends on the crowd density and on the walking behavior. When density is less than one person per square meter, the people are not interacting. If the density increases, free walking is no longer possible and the interaction of walking people should be considered. This graph on the left side shows the normal distribution of pacing frequencies for regular walking. A reliable statistical description of normal walking frequencies was first given by Professor Matsumoto in 1972 and 78, who investigated a sample of 500 people walking along. They concluded that the frequencies followed uh, a normal distribution with a mean of pacing rate uh, around 2.0 Hz, a standard with, uh, with a deviation of 0.17 Hz. Above the 5 Hz, vertical modes are unlikely to be excited. The periodic and lateral force has a frequency equal to half of the vertical excitation. When designing this slender structures like food bridges, the regulations and codes don't give us really clear, uh, clear definition of uh, loading of crowds, but uh, they are mostly dealing with the resulting effects. Uh, we, for um, more complex structures, uh, these this loading models given by codes are not really realistic, so for example, for a crowd of 1,000 people, these two values are really different. So we try to stick to the experimental observations given by, by multiple researchers. They are also giving us uh, a necessary answers to questions about uh, evaluating the response of uh, structures and including torsional and horizontal modes which are really not uh, studied in, in uh, codes. After defining the load, also an important issue is to define uh, a comfort which is the feeling that uh, is depending uh, individually on each person. Some persons are very sensible, others are not at all. Uh, get to use to the discomfort quickly. Uh, so we define that the comfort is uh, meeting, uh, meeting the criteria uh, not to feel in a danger uh, in case of large displacements. It also means that uh, you, have, you can have a seasick in a case of higher accelerations. So for us as designers, uh, the criteria is defined by measuring the deck acceleration uh, creating, uh, created by each uh, model shapes. In our case, According to our guideline for food bridges, we have chosen the class number two, which gives us um, a limit for vertical and lateral 
excitation of the structure. So these limits are giving us the range where we should uh, be, where we should compare our results from, from our model. So in the case of lateral vibrations, we have uh, multiple frequencies which are in this range. And also for the vertical and longitudinal vibrations, we have multiple frequencies that are in the range of, um, of the de de defined limits. So it means that we have to more closely study the dynamic behavior and also study the uh, harmonically induced uh, forces uh, on, the, on the structure and on the model. Another really important topic uh, which we have to deal with during the dynamic analysis is to choose the correct damping ratio. The amount of damping is very significant in the evaluation of the amplitude and the behavior of the, of the structure induced by pedestrians. Vibrations or the energy dissipation within the structure depends both on damping uh, of construction materials, uh, which is naturally distributed, and on the local effect of bearings and other boundaries. Additional damping could be also provided by non-structural elements like handrails and surfacing coating. In general, the amount of damping depends on the vibration level, as higher amplitudes of vibration causes more friction between structural and non-structural elements and uh, bearing. For the design of foot bridges for adequate uh, comfort level, which is in terms of pure code reliability, reliability consideration and serviceability condition, uh, the table here uh, define as uh, minimum and average damping ratios. Considering this for civil engineering structures, uh, this table represents the linear behavior which is usually accepted. The combination of this hypothesis with the assumption of damping distribution along the structure is characterized by a damping matrix C which is proportional to the mass matrix and stiffness matrix. This is a Rayleigh damping assumption. For our analysis, uh, a proportional damping Rayleigh uh, model was applied. And the graph on the left side uh, shows the dependency between the damping ratio and angular frequency. The blue line is a mass proportional, essential for lower frequencies. The red line is stiffness proportional. It's uh, for wells, balls and connections. Uh, and it is raising up with increasing or increase of angular frequency. The damping ratio is uh, given by testing and uh, is acquired from the tap uh, uh, as average value. The stiffness proportional beta factor is negligible opposite to the mass proportional. After choosing the uh, damping method, we have to create a time history analysis for uh, crowd induced forces. We have chosen the linear analysis with the modal method of analysis and with uh, periodic, periodic time history type. We defined the increment, time increment of 1 divided by 20 of period uh, given from the egg value analysis with a sinusoidal excitational function. The time history loads uh, should be applied according to the vibration mode shapes. In this case, for example, for second mode motor shape, which is rotational, we uh, applied the, the forces in a uh, horizontal direction. Uh, and uh, for, for example, for tense mode shape, we choose the 
uh, loading, uh, oscillating uh, up and down uh, in the vertical direction according to the modal shapes. So we run the modal analysis and based on it, on this, two natural shapes of oscillations uh, did not meet the criterion of maximum acceleration. It was uh, in for the tense natural shape and vibration mode, uh, where the red results are out of the acceptable range. The same is shown for the 11th natural frequency, where also results uh, out of the acceptable range were found. So these two uh, vibration modes were resulted into the design of pair of uh, tuned dampers design. In the case when we do not meet the criteriums for acceleration, maximum acceleration, the increase of structural damping is another possibility to reduce the dynamic effects on pedestrians on a footbridge. Uh, on a, for an existing bridge, the simplest approach is based on the increase of structural damping, which can be achieved either by uh, stiffening of particle elements or implementation of external damping devices. The use of external damping devices uh, for absor absorbing excessive structural vibrations can be effectively uh, solved in terms of reliability and cost. These devices can be based on active, semi-active or passive control techniques. Considering aspects like costs, maintenance requirements and practical experience, the usual option is for passive devices, which include viscose dampers, tuned mass dampers, pendulum dampers, tuned liquid column dampers, or liquid dampers. The most popular of this range uh, is the use of viscose damper and the tuned mass damper. The tuned mass dampers uh, are consisting of concentrated masses that are connected to the structure via some stiffness and stiffened and damping elements. These devices are designed to split the critical frequency into two new frequencies, one below and another above the initial natural one. And the relative motion between the structure and the tuned mass damper allows for the uh, works as for the energy dissipation. The tuned mass dampers (TMDs) are normally tuned so that the two peaks of the damp system frequencies response curves uh, have the same dynamic amplification when expressed in terms of displacement. The choice of the TMD mass uh, is based on the ratio mean of the structural modal mass uh, MD divided by MS. Typical values of the mass ratio can range from 0.01 to 0 0.05. The optimum frequency ratio is expressed by the factor delta between the TMD's uh, frequency and the system's frequency. The use or the performance of the TMD is extremely sensitive to frequency detuning, which can occur as a consequence of slight frequency changes associated uh, with pedestrian loads uh, or with modifications within the structure during its lifetime. Therefore, uh, it is of interest to evaluate, evaluate the TMD's efficiency for an estimated range of frequency, not to just simple one. So uh, you have to calculate the optimum TMD damping ratio and other constants uh, applied uh, in the model. In our case, the analysis led to design of pair of uh, dampers, tuned mass dampers, with the weight of two and a half tons, uh, with specified position for uh, corresponding 10th and 11th vibration mode amplitude. This is uh, the approach how we design or apply the TMDs into the analysis model. We created a mask connected, uh, represented by a uh, Y-beam, 
and connect it with a general link for modeling uh, its behavior. To the general links, we assign special properties that will represent the damping and the stiffness of, of connecting of the mass into the structure. The weight of the, of the damper is assigned to the beam element uh, using a special uh, density of, of, of the beam, of the material. Important is also to choose uh, correct setting of the boundaries or the general links connecting, uh, connecting the damper to, to the main beam of the structure. So we have to release correct directions of, of the link at the end. When applying these external elements, these, these, uh, which are representing the dampers, you can see directly the effect on reducing the or changing the vibration mode shape and the maximum acceleration. You apply the damper and its model uh, to, to the position of maximum amplitude of vibrating mode. This is how the damper uh, involves the 11th vibration mode shape. For the time history analysis, you cannot any longer use the modal analysis method, so you have to use the direct integration method. On the drawing below, you can see actual vibration of the footbridge with, uh, with the dampers uh, represented by masses uh, included. After we run the analysis, uh, we can actually see the effect of the dampers also on reducing the maximum acceleration of the structure which has been in this case in the second uh, span com almost completely reduced. The upper picture shows uh, the state before applying the, the damper, the bottom one shows after applying the damper. We did the same also for the 11th vibration mode, where you can see in the last band the reduction of the amplitude of acceleration. You can also pick from the results the graph of relative displacements of the damper uh, with comparison to the, uh, to the main structure. Here, in this case, the Amplitude difference uh, is around one centimeter for the damper in the fifth span. So I will once again uh, repeat what we done during the dynamic analysis in Midas Civil Software. First, we have to choose the conversion how we how we transfer the loads into the masses in the model. Then we perform the eigenvalue analysis and look on the natural frequencies and shapes of the structure. We have to choose or find the limits for comfort and for dynamic forces induced, induced by humans. We have to choose the damping ratio or the method representing uh, the damping of the structure. Then we have to perform the time history analysis uh, with, uh, with the harmonic loading uh, representing the crowd of people. And uh, then the harmonic analysis of acceleration of the structure, which then, if it does not meet the limits given by our previous assumptions for comfort, uh, then we have to proceed to add additional damping to the structure, which could be also done by designing uh, external dampers, which needs to be tuned according to the frequencies and masses of the structures, which can reduce the maximum acceleration in selected vibration modes. So I hope uh, it was an interesting topic for you. Uh, thank you for watching and attending this webinar. If you have any question, please uh, contact uh, us at the email address midasbridge at midasit.com.
you could contact us and ask us for any questions regarding this or even another topic. So thank you for your attention. See you on another interesting projects presentations.